Feature Friday, all my quilting friends. Thank y'all for joining me in my quilting studio today. We are working on a brand new quilt and we are gonna work with a technique that I'm not sure that I've shown before. We actually had a customer ask us a question on how to do this and I figured if one person asked us, then there are a whole lot of people who are gonna wanna know how to do this. So we're gonna do it today. We are gonna be taking a fairly large design that is gonna be edge to edge across our quilt top and stitching that out. But it's a design that's gonna to need to be offset. And we're not gonna be able to offset it on our display while we're working with our repeats because we don't have enough throat space on our machine to stitch out kind of a first row and then a second offset row. So we're gonna be doing that offset work when we do our nesting. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Let's get started. Okay, we've got our robot screen set up. I set my safe area and then I set my layout area, which is gonna be my quilt top. Um, because of the particular design I'm doing, I came just inside about a quarter of an inch from the top and the sides, and I came down about two rows so that I'm filling in about the first two rows, and then I ended somewhere around here, just about a quarter of an inch inside of my edges because I want to make sure the whole design completes inside so when I put my binding on, I'm not cutting off my design work. You'll see why when I show you, I've gone to patterns the pattern that I am going to be stitching out. I am, oop, I went past it. I am going to be doing this pretty little clamshell design. And so I want to see all those um, curves and stitches. I don't want them to disappear into my binding, or at least that's my plan. So that's why I came inside my quilt top a little bit. Normally you guys see me stitching way outside my quilt top, but I really want to see all these stitches. So I am going to hit my check mark. And here we go, here is one repeat of that. We're gonna have to fill in across horizontally, but you can see how big this is when you look at all the grid squares in the background. So there would be no way to get a vertical row underneath this, even if we nested very closely um, the two rows together or, or offset them really tight. Um, so we're going to do that in our nesting feature. So we're going to stitch out one row at a time. We're going to go to repeat. We are highlighted in edit and that happens when you add a pattern into your space. We're going to come over here to repeat and I'm going to do my horizontal repeat. I'm going to do Five. I think five looks good there. We've got a little extra space over here, so we're gonna clean that up when we go to our scale feature next. So I'm gonna hit scale, and I'm gonna turn my proportion lock on because I want to keep the size of this design as it is height and width wise for the most part. You don't want that to change too much. I, I want it all to look the same. If I took the proportion lock off, I think it would get kind of crazy looking. Um, so I want to leave it looking like this. So I'm going to hit my auto scale with the proportion lock on. It just tweaked it a little bit, but it filled in that space over here. Just stretched the design proportionally for me. So I have even less space now than I did before, now that it did that little bit of scaling. So I definitely can't get two rows in here. But you can see that it moved the design down to fill in the space. So now I have this big gap up here. And I want it to start stitching at the top of my quilt, which is where this top line is. So we need to move our design up to the top of our pattern box. So I'm gonna hit my move button. And the quickest way to do that is to hit or move the design to the top of our box button. That's this one right here. When I hit that, my whole design moved to the top of my quilt area. So we are ready to stitch this out now. So we're gonna stitch out this row. And then when we go to our nesting feature, we'll stitch out our second row, but we'll be able to offset our design to fill in all of these little spaces here. So let's get started with that. I'm gonna go to home. I'm going to engage my needle so that we are stitching and not tracing. I'm gonna hit my green start button. 
I am going to double check that my needle is not in my fabric. We don't want to tear our fabric when the robotic system takes over and moves our machine. So I'm going to hit my check mark and we are going to be moving over to this little dot here on the edge. That's green. That's where our pattern's going to start. You can see the crosshairs, the little blue lines, they moved all the way over to that start point too. So our robotic system is telling us to do a single stitch with our quilting machine. So I'm going to do my stitch. I've got an up down button here. So I've done my single stitch and I can hit the check mark on my display. My next note is to pull up my bobbin thread. So I'm going to just slide my machine out of the way tug on my top thread and get my bobbin thread to the surface. So I've got both of those. So I can hit OK. My robot's going to move my machine back to that start point. And it's telling me to cycle my needles to lock my stitches. So I cycle my needle three times. If you are not someone who does locking stitches and you like to bury your tails in your quilt, you can skip this stuff. Just make sure you have nice long tails so that you can do your berry work. I'm gonna hit my check mark. And now I am told to turn the stitching on on my long arm and then my machine's gonna move when I press the check mark on my screen. My stitching is on my right handlebar, so I'm gonna turn that on here and then hit my check mark. All right, so we have finished stitching out. We are gonna turn the stitching off on our handlebars and hit our check mark. We are gonna cycle our needle. If you are a thread barrier, make sure you just leave long tails and skip that step. And we are all set here. So I am just gonna move my machine out of the way and bring it back so that I can, oops, sorry, I know I'm making you guys sick by doing that, I'm sorry. Pull my bobbin thread back up I'm just going to do a quick stitch here and just pull on this a little bit so I can get my bobbin thread to the surface. All right. I probably should have thought about doing that before I got you back on camera, but I wanted to make sure you guys could see this. So let me just knit my little threads here. Okay. So now that we are ready to start nesting, let me get this last little tail here. The first thing we need to remember is that this is the row that we have just stitched out. We are going to hit our nesting feature that is down at the bottom right hand corner of our home screen. See, we're still in home. This is what we stitched out. We're gonna hit our nesting feature. When we do that, our first item is to select and mark our nesting point. Now you guys know that I usually go with kind of a a low point on my design. So I'm gonna go in the middle of the quilt and hit the very point of that design. It ends in a little point and I am putting my needle in my fabric. If you are not comfortable with putting your needle in your fabric when rolling your quilt, you can always mark this with a marking pencil, pen, or marking chalk. Just make sure you know it's gonna come off of your fabric. I have selected my nesting point, so I'm gonna hit my check mark. Now I'm gonna roll my quilt. So I am going to release my roller bars and roll my quilt. I'm gonna go nice and slow so that I don't risk tearing anything. And I need to remember that I'm gonna be nesting my design. So I need to make sure that my design can kind of get up in this area. So I don't wanna roll too far. I wanna make sure I have enough space for my machine to come back far enough. So I'm gonna kind of give this a test out here. This looks pretty good because I'm pretty sure my needle can come back this far. All the nuances of nesting. I'm gonna lock my front bar in place and we are gonna hit our check mark. Now it says move the machine to your nesting point. Now for me, my machine's at my nesting point because I have that needle down in my fabric. But if you marked your nesting point with either a marking pen, pencil, or marking chalk, you can go ahead and move your machine back to that location. I'm gonna hit my check mark. All right, so the line in gray is what we've stitched out already and the line in black that's inside the layout box is what our robotic system thinks it's gonna do next. 
but it's not offset yet and we need to do that. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to use our little cross move feature up here. The first thing I need to do is to take my needle out of my fabric. So I'm gonna pull my needle up. That way I can move my handlebars around and I won't tear my fabric. So I'm gonna hit my crosshairs. Now normally you guys see me just move my machine forward and backward, but this time we are going to move the handlebars. I'm gonna just show you from this angle off to the left. And when I'm doing that, you can see my design is starting to offset. Now I'm going to use my crosshair that's going uh, vertically to kind of line myself up with the little point where the designs meet in the middle up here so that I know I'm kind of centering my new row in the middle there. So now that I've moved to the left, I can then push my machine away from me to nest my rows together. Cool, huh? So now I think that looks pretty good. I don't want the rows like right on top of each other, like the stitching kissing. I might get them a little bit closer here. Just wiggle that off. This is where you can really just kind of fine tune things to get it looking the way you want and where that grid that you have in the background can come into play and be really important. As you can kind of gauge distances based on what you've got that grid set out. So I kind of like what this is looking like. I think I've got things lined up pretty well. You can see that the point here at the bottom of the new row is kind of lined up with the middle point where these two uh, meet. So I think I'm, I'm pretty good. So all I did was I turned on my move crosshairs and instead of just moving forward or backward to get space in between the rows vertically, I shifted horizontally. You have to be careful when you're shifting horizontally because it offsets your rows and if you're just doing a standard design that does not need offset, it could really throw you off. But in an instance like this, it's pretty awesome to be able to do that. So from here, since I think this is looking pretty good, I am gonna go ahead and hit my check mark. When I do that, I've got my new row all set and ready. So here's that row all set and ready to go. But we need to remember that we have one, two, three, four, five repeats of our design, just like we did on the first row. But we shifted these over to the left a little bit. So on our quilt, our first design is actually going to start out here in my batting and backing to fill in this space next to this first design. So by the time we get across our quilt, this little side here on the end isn't going to have anything to stitch in it. So we need to add another repeat to this. So from here, we can go into edit, we can go to repeat and just add one more horizontally. And so we've got another one hanging off the end that's gonna fill in this half side here and then come out into my fabric and batting. So we'll have one design here. That's kind of something you have to remember when you're working with quilts. That's why we need a little bit of extra batting and backing on our side so that we can do tricky little things like this, but it's worth it when you get your pattern looking the way you want. So just remember when you're offsetting things, sometimes you're gonna have to add another repeat on your ends to fill in that blank space. So from here, I'm gonna go back to home and I'm going to have my needle engaged and hit my start button. I've checked that my needle's out of my fabric. I can hit my check mark, and we're gonna move over to our start point, which is gonna be off our quilt top this time. Ooh, I just barely made it on my batting there. I was really tight with my fabric because I only did one width of fabric because this quilt's about, I don't know, 32 inches wide. I was cutting it pretty close here. I'm gonna take my stitch and hit my check mark, pull up my bobbin thread, 
hit my check mark. We're gonna move into place, cycle my needle, hit my check mark, and turn my stitching on. So this little bit is gonna stitch off the quilt and then we'll stitch onto the quilt so that we fill in the space next to our first design on our top row. So I'm gonna let this stitch out for just a little bit so that you can, guys can see how well this fills in. See if I can get closer. So you can see between the bottom of my first row and the top of my second row, looks like I have about a quarter of an inch here and then the design kind of builds in. So I'm really happy with how that nested together and how my spacing worked out. I really like how that looks. Remember when you're stitching on just flat batting, you might get the extra fuzzies around your needle, so you might have to do some extra cleaning around your needle and in your bobbin area when you're working with patterns like this and you're going off of your quilt hopping into your batting just because there's all that extra fuzz, so make sure you keep your machine clean while you're doing this as well. And just a side note for anybody who does a pattern like this, this is a very dense pattern and it is going to take a lot of bobbin thread. This is not a very big quilt, but I wound like four bobbins just to make sure I had enough and I don't really know that I'm gonna have enough. I might have to stop and wind more bobbins. So here we are, we're about to move on to our next pattern. Switching over here. And it's nesting great. All right, we are still stitching out, but I just wanted to show you guys how nice this is looking. You can see this design that it started off, came on, nested in nicely with spacing here on the top row, lovely offset. Here's the next design following into the one above, and we are starting our third one here. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope this is something that's gonna be useful for you guys. Sometimes your designs are just a little bit too big to fit in your space to do a second row and have everything offset. So this is a way you can do it. Thanks so much for joining me today. Hope y'all have a wonderful weekend coming up and we'll see you soon.